everybody. Welcome to the new show with my friend Steve Salyer. Hi, Steve. Hey, Karen. <laughs> Welcome to Felix's Helixes. <laughs> What a weird name. <laughs> <laughs> but it's better than being the other Orphan Black podcast. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We came up with a fun name. And I'm telling you right now, the best name ever is Tatiana is everyone. Yes. That is the best name ever for a podcast. I have to give them huge props for that name. But um, Felix is Helix is. I thought it sounded cute. And I thought I could maybe make a logo with like uh helena's hair with the dna strand and that did not work <laughs> i made nightmare fuel <laughs> trust me you don't want to see it no i i gave steve nightmares yes so uh we're going to be talking about season four of orphan black this is our first episode we didn't get a chance to do a pre-season four episode for you guys and we're really sorry about that but we're here for the first episode and of course New to this network, new to Southgate Media, Steve. But you guys probably know him if you followed us uh, in our other Orphan Black podcast. Absolutely. But hi, Steve. Hello. So we'll be talking about Season 4, Episode 1, The Collapse of Nature. Why don't you tell us about that, Steve? Well, that was written by Graham Mason and directed by John Fawcett. Showrunners. Yes, both of them. Yay. And I heard that they got this idea when they had Sarah having like this weird nightmare where she met Beth last season. Yes, that's where the idea came from. And a brilliant idea it was. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> because, wow, this blew my mind. It seriously blew my mind. Yeah, one of the strongest opening episodes since season one. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I was watching this and I thought to myself, okay, number one, they can bring back characters that were dead. Yes. Which they did in this episode. More than one, three or four, I think. Mm, yeah, and a couple that were alive that we hadn't seen in a while. Right? So, yeah, they brought Ugh. back a whole lot. Okay, first of all, I have to say not all of them were pleasant returns. <laughs> yeah, I knew that was coming. Because you know how I feel about Angie. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. But we did get back, uh, we got back Paul. Yeah, in the first 10 seconds. Which is a huge plus to me. Wow! I have to say. <laughs> and we got back Olivier, and we got back Leaky. Yes, we did. And hello, those were all welcome returns in my book, because they're oh, all absolutely. very interesting characters. And... I'm, I have a feeling that we're, th this isn't the end of the flashbacks. Even though we return to the present day at the end of this episode, I have a feeling we're going to revisit those flashbacks. What do you think? Oh, I think so, too. I think we definitely will see some more flashbacks. Good, good, good. Okay, do you want to give our ratings now or do you want to wait till the end? Oh, let's give them now. Okay, you go first. All right. I rated this episode 10 out of 10 Freaky leakies. Yeah, I can see why. <laughs> it's good. I had to give it a nine and a half. And for the same reason that our feedback person gave it a little bit off. No, Helena. Nine and a half pieces of tail jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say bolero jackets, but there wasn't enough of the little toro jackets in this episode so. right <laughs> <laughs> so but i said pieces of tail jewelry and no helena means you know not perfect yeah I, I can see that but 10 it was so close to a 10 for me yes <laughs> uh i mean we got mk and she's very close to helena but not a hundred percent no she no. she's not that off kilter but uh she's kind of the uh, up north, icy version of Helena. The Icelandic version of Helena. <laughs> as yeah, were. I can see that. Yeah. And I have a few little pieces of news before we get into the discussion. All righty. Uh, well, you, I'm sure you know most of this, too. But <laughs> um, all season four titles are quotes from the works of Donna Haraway. 
She actually uh, teaches on and off at the University of Santa Cruz, which is my stomping grounds back home. Uh, and her work, Simeon Cyborgs and Women, the Reinvention of Nature, is the work that it comes from. There was a joke referenced in this episode <laughs> uh, <laughs> where Cosima says, well, you know what they say about lesbians in U-Hauls, and Allison is oblivious, or is it? Beth, no, it's Beth, it's Beth. Yeah, Beth is a, be, oblivious. doesn't have a clue what she's talking about. Right. And the joke is, what does a lesbian bring on a second date? And the answer is U-Haul, which alludes to the fact that they become monogamous very quickly in their relationships. Mm -hmm. And uh, the male version is, what's a second date? <laughs> is the answer to that. So um, those are, I thought they were pretty funny. Um, yes. And then I found the MK name was really, really fascinating because I think it equates almost directly to MK Ultra. that um, I, I don't think it was a mistake that they okay. named her MK right. In, right. Her, in her designation, that she gets MK from her de designation from, from Dyad. And the MK Ultra experiments were performed on people either quote, unable to fight back, unquote, or in a position where they would be embarrassed to confess their location. So they would be like transients or handicapped. And I know this is distasteful, but I'm just telling you what it really was. The government did these experiments on people and they were drug experiments and psychological experiments. And they were performed on these people that were inhibited in some way or they were embarrassed to confess their location so they would be found in brothels or bathhouses and they didn't want to tell their wife or significant other where they were right or homeless or transient or you know one of those things and i found that mk slash vera slash and the fans are calling her dolly because of the <laughs> because of the mask she wore right you know the clone dolly mask um she is in a similar situation in that she was homeschooled. This is all background from the comics, but this isn't giving away anything from the comics. Um, she was homeschooled and she has a form of Asperger's. So when Dyad picked her to do experiments with, they thought that it would make very little impact on society because she was disassociated with society. She was not part of society as a whole right so it wouldn't impact very many people and it it was a mistake on their part <laughs> because <laughs> they didn't they underestimated her right and if you read those comics and i'm i urge you to do that because it's it's part of an ongoing series that's out right now called orphan black helsinki and it tells about her background and how she was taken and her interactions with some other clones, some familiar and some not so familiar. And uh, and I, I, I really found it fascinating to see. And you can read a little bit about it on Wikipedia, too, if you don't want to read the comic books. But um, it, it's, it's really interesting. And I, I think it's kind of a d direct correlation between MK Ultra and her being named MK, at least in my opinion. I thought. So I found it was a, a great connection between the two. And then I read on EW, I was reading the recap, right. Entertainment Weekly, and they said, and I quote here, I wonder if we'll find out someone is an undercover neolutionist when metal things snap into their hands. Chekhov's magnets, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was a very telling comment that perhaps we'll see someone pick up something in it snaps into their hands and yes I, i'm gonna keep an eye out for that i don't know about you i absolutely will yeah so uh i thought i'd do my a b and c storylines if you want me to do that that works for me okay good and then we'll just talk so my a story would be beth i hear you crying <laughs> beth i hear you crying <laughs> a kiss staple yes <laughs> um <laughs> B story would be need some wiggle room. <laughs> Gross. Yeah. <laughs> um, C story would be guns and money. And my bonus would be Helsinki. 
<laughs> so, of course, the first one is Beth, um, the whole Beth storyline. Um, start us off. All right. This was absolutely fantastic to actually get to experience what Beth was going through. And you can actually feel the pain that she and the turmoil that she's going through at the time. And it just gives you a whole different perspective of her and actually why she did what she did in episode one. Agreed. Agreed. She, I think she looked so dark. Yes. Just so beaten down in this episode. And I wonder how anyone believed that Sarah was Beth. (laughs) Exactly. But there had to have been that plausibility in that she just was a dead ringer. I mean, they were identical looking. Right. And I I do believe that Beth was probably much stronger before she got involved. Sure. And it was just all the pressure of being involved and learning everything that she did that she wasn't strong enough emotionally to carry it. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess they were thinking that she kind of snapped out of it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, because when Sarah watched those tapes, she was much more herself. Right. She didn't look like that woman that stepped in front of the train. No. But the the Beth that we saw was the same Beth that was on that train platform. Absolutely was. And the thing that gets me, that really interests me about this episode is that Tatiana never played this Beth, and it's really amazing to me how she picks that up and runs with it and mirrors that performance like, I I don't know, it's just crazy good. Yes, it is. Right? Because we can see through the performance that she delivers in this how Beth would have been, definitely, and then... It translates. I mean, it it makes complete sense. Yes, it does. I mean, it's almost like we're seeing it as it happened, but then we have to think, well, it never happened. So, (laughs) you know, it never really (laughs) happened in real life. It's a show. So it's not real memories, but boy, does it really look like that, right? (laughs) Yes. And it feels that way. I know. It really does. And again, it's just testament to her acting ability. That she really makes us believe that these are real things happening. And it's so good. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's- so I'm guessing from this that no one but Beth knew about MK. Correct. Because Allison and Kasima, they never mention her. No. No, MK knows about Allison and Kasima, but have not met. Right. And will not, I don't believe. No, I but she's, she's going to keep it to one sister at a time. <laughs> so Sarah is her sister right now. Right. And she's only talking to Sarah because there's <laughs> imminent danger and imminent danger that could affect her, I'm guessing. Yes. If they're coming after Mama, then yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. Yes. Kendall. Mm hmm. Right. And that was interesting as well. And we also got flashbacks of that scene in the warehouse with all of the players there. So can we hope to see all those people? I mean, I want to see James Frain. Yes. (laughs) Can we have him come back as well? Yes, I believe we will see James Frain. Yeah, I want that to happen big time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, I don't want them to muck it up, but I wouldn't mind having the flashbacks in half the season and then having it finish up the the other half of the season all in the present so that we can get James Frain instead of Matt Frewer. You know what I'm saying? So we wouldn't have that all junked up with all the extra players in it. Um, Because I can see where that would be an issue with all the the co-stars and all that. (laughs) But wow, I mean, imagine all the people we could have in this. With (laughs) with all the, uh, what are they, the... The uh, religious nuts Mm -hmm. that have passed, (laughs) right? We could see where they started. 
We could go back further than this even. Oh, yeah. With the, the fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, and MK has a bit to do with that if you read any of the the backstory on her. I'm, I hate to give anything away, but uh, feel free to read up on her. Yes. So uh, that's not out of the question. I, I am just dying <laughs> to see where they go from this. And Beth, Beth and Paul... That is an interesting dynamic as well. Oh, yeah. That that was so unlike the Paul that we know to just completely turn off. Yeah. He didn't want to be around her. No, he really didn't. Yeah. and it, But he wouldn't be. He wouldn't say, yes, I'm breaking it off because he was doing a job. Right. Now, I liked the mirror between and. Of course, everybody who watches Orphan Black is supposed to have been with Orphan Black from the beginning. Yes. <laughs> At least that's what they're assuming. Although you can jump in if you want to. But you get these extra nuggets if you've watched it from the beginning. And in this case, you get a mirror of the scene where Sarah is pretending to be Beth and comes on to Paul in the kitchen. Uh-huh. And they have that super ultra hot sex scene sex. in the kitchen. But... In this episode, there's the scene where Beth comes on to Paul, and it's probably only a matter of days in between, right? Oh, yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Weeks, not, you know, maybe weeks maybe at the weeks. most. But right. Yeah, because she's still long. under investigation about the shooting. Yes. So it, it's not very long in between, and he's just completely turned off by her. He will yeah, not. Yeah, won't even look at her. Right. And... That change has to be just visceral. It, it has to be something that he just feels in his bones that Beth is a different person. So to see that played out again, but with Beth instead of with Sarah is eye-opening to me. Yes. And then to see her pull the gun. Oh, man. Right? And you go, oh, my God, what, 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 <laughs> right? what would we have changed if she would have pulled that trigger? Yeah, right. And and to know that Paul was in that same situation with Sarah several times. Yes. So that would have been a mirror as well. Just, I mean, the depth to which they go in the mirroring of these episodes. And apparently they had to rebuild that set. Yes, they did. I saw that too. <laughs> yeah, because it had been torn down. And then the set of the precinct, was, although the precinct wasn't as important because no. they could do that from different angles and make it look like a precinct. Right. But her apartment, they had to get that. Just pretty, right. Yeah, pretty dead on. It was, I couldn't tell a big difference. I don't no. know about you, but I couldn't. I was happy with how it came out. Anyway, it, it looked really good, I thought. Yes. Uh, wow, though. I mean... Just Paul was so cold in this. Yeah. Still. He looked like his m military training had kicked in. Yes. And he was just strictly doing his job by the book. Still, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice to see him back. I yes. mean, I, I missed him. Uh, and he was shirtless the very first scene. Sure. So you, there was that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry about it, but you know, he's not never shirtless on Arrow when I rewatch Arrow. So no, I gotta get my not. fix. <laughs> yeah. Um I really, really like him on this. I know we're not gonna get the Paul that we had before. Right. But this is such an interesting way to bring those people back. I mean, we're not gonna see Olivier much further past this, I'm quite certain. Yeah. We're not going to see the other clones, most likely, because from what I've heard, this is their way to simplify the show. Right. And they wouldn't be bringing back the other clones if they're trying to simplify it. No. At least that's that's my thinking. Right. Yeah. I. It's enough to add Crystal and MK to Tatiana's plate, but to try to go back and bring Katya and <laughs> right and the all male the others clones back in yeah as well yeah well I still think we'll see a caster clone before the season's over with you think so yes at least one well they're talking about topside so yes. we'll see probably a hint of one at the very least 
Yes. Because they are involved in Topside. Topside being the umbrella corporation, I think, over both both sides of Lita and Castor, right? Yes. Isn't that what we've deduced? Yes, they were basically over Dyad. Right. And the military project at it the time. It still blows my mind, all the <laughs> all the different arms of everything. Yes. And none of them know about each other except for the top, top levels of everything. Mm-hmm. So crazy. Crazy. Okay, so. We also need to give a, a shout out to Art. Oh, so good in this episode, right? Yes. This was probably his meatiest episode to date, and he just rocked it. I agree. He was so good in this. And not only did we get, I would say, a bit of resolution on his love for Beth. Yes. Because I had no idea it went this deep. No. (laughs) Uh, And why he seemed so confused about Sarah coming in. Now that makes sense. You know, why he would be confused about her changing overnight. That makes complete sense. Why he would follow her, why he would take that money. Mm -hmm. That makes 100% sense now. But also why he would cover up that murder. Yes. So again, that comes full circle and we see all that as well. Crazy good. Yes. Right? Yes. (laughs) They tied it back to so well yeah and we got to see his acting chops in this i think it's it's the biggest chunk he's had in an episode to date i agree and boy was he good and that's one of the things that i've been dying to see is him and i think we've said it yes we have several (laughs) times that we would like to see art in a bigger role and to see him Featured heavily in this episode was really a treat. Yes, it was. So hopefully we'll go back a little bit more with Beth and see Art a little bit more. And to see that there's a neolutionist in in the precinct. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, that's something that Beth didn't pass on. No. That still exists, most likely. Yes. <laughs> to date. And it, who knows if it's only Duco. Maybe that's why we don't like uh, Angie. Oh. <laughs> Could it possibly be, please? Oh, please, please. <laughs> because yuck. That would be a nice way to... Uh, Kill her? <laughs> yes. Art <laughs> discovers that she's Neo Lucian. <laughs> yes. I, I wouldn't mind Art killing her. No, not at all. Uh, or anyone, really. I don't care. I'm not picky. No. <laughs> anyone in that position. Yeah. Uh, art, I give A+. Plus, A++. Plus plus. Um, yes. Also, uh, Paul, just amazing. Yes. I liked seeing Allison before she changed into butt-kicking Allison. Yes, it was nice to see Soccer Mom back. <laughs> yes. this was. She didn't know how to shoot a gun yet. But she's still doing the flower arrangements Mm -hmm. in delivering things. This time it was delivering drugs and pee. Yes. (laughs) So that's interesting. She still does have that connection. Raul. Is it Raul? Yes. Yes. Raul returns. Yes. That was nice to see. He hasn't gone off to college yet. I loved what Beth called him, though. (laughs) What did she call him in this one? Horny bastard. Oh, yeah. Horny <laughs> bastard. Because he, he winks at her and says, yeah. what a lovely yeah. family or something like that. Because they're related. This is, Yeah, this is the first time Raul's seen that there, there's more than one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because we had speculated on him coming to Sarah's house and seeing right. all of them there. But Together. he has seen more than one of them before. Yes. Raul. Ever the sly one. (laughs) And I just, I love Allison and her sparkly cards. Yes. For all that you do. Ching, ching, ching. Little crystals and the herpes of crafting. (laughs) Glitter. Yes. Uh, She's fantastic. Uh, Anything else about Beth? Well, the one other interaction she has 
with Raj Mm -hmm. also makes his reaction in episode one make a whole lot more sense. Right. Because Beth was basically kind of bringing him along. Yeah. Flirting with him in order to get something. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then when Sarah shows up as Beth, it's like... (laughs) Yeah. He's expecting that, and that's not what he got. Right. He got a bit of a cold shoulder from her. Yes. Yeah, and he had just given her all those cameras. Now, I'm guessing those were still there in the condo. Yes. (laughs) And we never saw anything else from those. No. But one has to wonder. Mm Mm-hmm. Why would they show us that and then not have anything else to do with it? Maybe there's some footage there. Mm-hmm. We'll have to see. Yes. So there, there's a checkoff gun again. Right. Another little dangling <laughs> precipice, as it were. Yeah. <laughs> that for us to jump off of. Right. And it would be <laughs> yeah. a long fall. Yes, it will be. We'll see where that takes us. How many, how many uh, outcroppings we hit. <laughs> Right, on the way, on the way down. <laughs> now, Beth also goes to this club where she finds out about this kid, uh, the kid, the, the murder vic. Right. And uh, his cheek was cut off, right? Ew. Yes, yes. It was a big chunk of his cheek was missing. Yeah, down to the bone. Yes. And uh, apparently... <laughs> Another another thing that MK Ultra did was with implants too, so that's another common thread. Right. But um, apparently they needed something out of his cheek, and she finds out that he hung out in this bar, and it's a neolutionist bar, and it's, it's the one, the of one course, been to before. Right. That is featured. That is, um, what's his name's bar. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. Olivier. Olivier it's Olivier's yeah. bar. And we've seen in the back of Olivier's bar many times with yes. uh, <laughs> Sarah and Helena <laughs> and Paul. And we see again with him getting some some jewelry in this episode. <laughs> it's pretty gross. Yes. That tail gives me the oogs. I don't know about you. But uh, in in this case, they go. She goes to the bar. I love how she paws it off on on uh, Art too. Art gives her this information about the Vic, and she tells him her information, which she got from MK. And he says, "How do you get this information?" And she says, "I'm doing my work. <laughs> yeah. That's all." <laughs> she just brushes it off, so she doesn't let Art in on the secret at all. No, uh, he is not part of the Clone Club yet. <laughs> no, not yet. And uh, so she goes to talk to these people, and they've all got this weird stuff being done to them. And and we see the the same neolutionist that we saw in the first season mm-hmm. with the white hair and the white eye. Yes. And she was hanging around Leaky in the first season. And she was also Olivier's right hand, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So... Um, yeah, she doesn't like Beth being there, right? No, members only. Yeah. She, uh, I like to think of her as a, a Brigitte Nielsen sort of clone. Right, yeah. Thing. She definitely had that feel to her. Yeah. But Beth shows the badge, and there, there's no getting around the badge. No. You, you got to let her in. She, she's a member. That's her, that's her member Ooh. card. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And uh, and she finds some people to talk to. I love all the coincidences, though. She just happens to be a clone, and the victim is a neolutionist, and she gets sent to the neolutionist bar, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Where she talks to this couple, and the couple, the the male of the couple, ends up getting this implant as well. Yes. So we get to the wiggle room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this we saw this last season with the doctor. Dr. Nealon, yes, trying to uh implant uh Delphine with one of those things. Right. 
Yuck. Yeah. So this is making me wonder, what are they? Are they organic? Or are they man-made? Or are they a cross between the two? I think they're probably going to end up being a cross between the two. I think so, too. Because but what I'm would definitely... the point be in just implanting an organic thing right. in a human? It would have to be something that needs to grow inside a human being and take, you know, nutrition, mm -hmm. live off of a human, of human cells, so it can't be completely organic. Right. I mean, that's my thinking, at least. It's and I think it is very possible that this is a mind control device. Yeah. And again, with the MK Ultra, the mind control experiments as well. Mm -hmm. Ugh, that worm grosses me out. <laughs> but of course, we see that Trina's got magnets in her fingers. <laughs> right. And she's proud to show that off. I think that's kind of cool, actually. Mm -hmm. Although, I would never have it done because most of my days spent in front of a computer. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> that would not work well. Absolutely no on that one for me. Same here. <laughs> and the rest of my days spent reading books on a tablet. So, again, with a no. Yep. Uh, even though they say they're shielded pretty well, I, I'm not going to chance it. No, no. But I thought it was awesome. Oh, yeah. Of course, that would be something that would come in handy if you if you don't if you're not around technology very often. Right. Pretty. Which cool. is kind of silly that they want to do the self um, evolution using technology. Well, your technology right. is. It's anti-technology, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, unless they are using such low... Well, they weren't because she could hold a pen. They were pretty right. high magnetic quality magnets. Yeah. So we'll, we'll have to find out about these worms. But apparently the first guy was implanted and he didn't want to be implanted. And so they took it without his consent. Right. Which meant they had to kill him. Knock him off. Yep. Right. And the second one, he did it with consent. He just didn't want it anymore. So they took it out of him. And we don't know what happened to him yet. No. Right. But I assume that at least he's still alive for now because of their interruption. And all we the can police so, yes. converging <laughs> downstairs. Well, I mean, the sirens came right away and the gunshot and all that stuff. So. Right. Yeah, I'd like to hope so. They seemed like a decent couple I wouldn't want. Of course, if he comes up dead in the first 10 minutes of this week's episode, I'm going to be <laughs> I'm going to be a little mad. Well, Aaron really didn't want Trina talking to Beth at all. Yeah, I know. Still. Yeah. Now the baby wouldn't be with the dad. <laughs> That's not fair. But she seemed nice enough. Right. You know, she wanted to tell Beth what was happening and so that's just, meh, not a good situation. No. And I did like that we saw Felix in this episode. And there was a, <laughs> it was so close to seeing Beth. Yeah, a literal near miss. Yes. In this episode where their heads turned just as they passed each other. Each other. Uh -huh. oh. <laughs> and him talking about getting arrested for peeing outside and that it was a, a performance art piece. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. I loved it. I loved it. Well, and, and Beth telling Trina that, yeah, I'm uh, looking to have my breasts surgically modified into like corkscrews. <laughs> or something. Yeah. <laughs> or something. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I loved all of it. That whole bar scene with Beth, she's just not faced by any of it. No. And I, it, that's what you have to love about Beth. Uh, we're getting to know her and the fact that she's so cop. Yeah. And it, that's great. And it really deepens her character that we know also that she ends up killing herself. Right. So what had to shake her to the core in order for her to take her own life? Just a few, just a short time after this. I mean, yeah. it, we have to find this out because right now she's not shaken up enough. It's close. I mean, she's... 
she's down, but she she hasn't lost hope yet. So what what does it? What pushes her over the edge? And I'm guessing we're going to see that. Uh, maybe I, shooting an innocent person is probably doing ninety percent of the heavy lifting here. Yeah, yeah. Especially being a cop. That's true. Right. Yeah, so that would push her pretty close, I'm guessing. Yes. And then all the rest of it with being embroiled in this whole clone thing and trying to figure out what's happening there. Right. And then having the neo get right in the middle of it. <laughs> right. And seeing all that wormy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. Exactly. All she needs is a peek at Olivier and that's it. Snap. Yeah. <laughs> right off the edge. And then, of course, at the end of the episode, we switch and we see our dear Sarah and our lovely young lady. Yes. And it was so well done that it, it just like the opening kind of slapped you in the face saying, oh, you're back in the past. All of a sudden, we get slapped again at the end saying, oh, now we're back in the present. Right. But it, it eased into it. And then... You were like, wait, wait, what? What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It went from someone going to sleep to you waking up and all of a sudden. There's Kira and you go, whoa. <laughs> wait a minute. Did someone else have someone that looked like Kira? Yeah. <laughs> and then you realize, no, it's Sarah and Kira. And MK is actually talking to someone. Art. Right, Art. And what could have, I guess, finding out that. They knew where she was and that they were coming for Kendall made her get out of her comfort zone and, and find art, which right. is, ow. So that means there's an imminent danger, and it has to be an imminent danger to her as well. Yes. Because otherwise she wouldn't have poked her head out. Because they've been in imminent danger before without her coming to the forefront at all. Right. Uh, I mean, Cosima has been in danger and Sarah's been in danger. So it has to be something that impacts her directly, I'm guessing. Yeah, I think you're right there. And I think we're not going to find out right away what the danger is. No. <laughs> so, yeah, but we do see that they're going to be moving everybody. Kendall, Siobhan, Sarah, Kira. Kira. Coming back home. All of them. Where's where's daddy? Exactly. <laughs> Where is he? He's on Game of Thrones. <laughs> but that should already be close <laughs> to being completed for filming for this season. So Yeah. I I wanna see him back. I mean yes. we got more we got more of art, so can we just ask for him? Back? Yes. Oh I, I still believe he's got a very huge part to play before this is all over. Well, if we're gonna see flashbacks, I would like to see what part he played mm -hmm. in the past. Because I do yes. think there's something there. And I would also like to see her conning him, which I don't think we're ever gonna see, but boy, that would be fun. Oh yeah. <laughs> to see her taking him in. And kind of falling for him too. Mm-hmm. Maybe that, they could put that in the comics. <laughs> so we see them getting the alert and uh, starting to take off. And, and that's where we end the episode. And uh, we're going to take up next week, I'm guessing, from there. Oh, yeah. And I'm guessing more flashbacks. I can't we, wait. We hope so. I can't wait. It's so amazing. <laughs> yes, that was one of my tweets was, is it Thursday yet? <laughs> Right? And that was like five minutes after the show was over. <laughs> I know. I know. And it's weird to have it on a Thursday. Yes, it is. I just have to say that right now. Although I, it's all right with me for it to be yeah. on a Thursday. I'm, I'm fine with it. Um, some people are upset that it's on Thursday. Eh, I'm okay. There's nothing else on that day that bothers me. Right. Uh, as long as it's not on Monday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everything Monday, I watch is on Monday. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm glad it's not on Monday, but Thursday's fine. Uh, that's it's all good. I don't have any problem. You don't have any problem. I'm guessing. Nope. Good. Uh, yeah. So you have anything else to talk about? Oh, we forgot to mention that Allison wants an expense report. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah. We get to see her in the beginning stages of her OCD type A personality with this. 
And we also see the beginning part of her telling Beth that she needs to handle the money. Mm -hmm. Thus why Beth has the money. Yes. Which is important. Mm -hmm. So she has Allison's money in the first episode of season one. Yes. And it's because Allison decides she's not going to mess about with that anymore. Yes. <laughs> Very well, illuminating. Look how far Allison's come since then. <laughs> right? She doesn't even want to put money in, in Kasima's account. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Yeah, to drug Kingpin. <laughs> right? <laughs> Hilarious. And the the little piece of... The preview, I don't know what episode it's going to be where Donnie and Helena need to be pretending to be husband and wife. Yeah. <laughs> when is that? Is that going to be next week, this week's I episode? I don't know. I hope it is because I, I want to so. see that so Me bad. <laughs> it's apparently, she doesn't need to look like Allison, apparently, because she looks like Helena. They just need to pretend to be husband and wife. Right. Because she looks like Helena completely. Yeah. Uh, but... It, this is a role that they have taken on in the past, uh, and that's what made me think of it as the drug kingpin when they infiltrated the drug lord's You're right. warehouse. Uh, she actually pretended to be Allison in that case, which was interesting. <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. That, one of my favorite episodes, actually, when she oh, comes yeah. out with the blood all over herself and she says, we shall go now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Yeah. Yeah, that, and I liked Allison uh, saying that she wanted to shoot something. Yes. So we see where her fascination with guns comes from as well. Mm-hmm. Just uh, some great backstory all around with everybody, even Paul and Art, some of the non-clones. Mm-hmm. And, and we get to see Felix before Sarah. and Returns, yeah, before Sarah returns. Right. So, yeah, he was basically on his own. And Cooking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lost. Mm-hmm. Wow. If they just... were in Los Angeles, he'd have been out on Santa Monica Boulevard. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he certainly would have. Certainly would have. So I can't wait. I don't know about you, but I cannot wait for this trip. Oh, yes. Yeah, super excited. Yeah, me too. I think I'm more excited this year than I was last year. Uh, although I thought last year was good, this year looks like it's going to be just like a return to season one almost. Right. Where everything is new again. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm really excited. So. Yes. All right. Uh, we did get a feedback already. That's unbelievable. I know. <laughs> but it could be because I gave this person a heads up that we were doing <laughs> this podcast. And uh, of uh, course, it's be. my friend Justina. And Our friend Justina. Okay. Our friend Justina. <laughs> and... Uh, she sent in an audio feedback, so I shall play it now, yes? Yes. All right. Hi, Karen and Steve. I am so happy that Orphan Black is back. I missed my clone club, and we got a story this week about Beth that I thought we may never get, and I didn't realize how much I wanted that information until I was getting it. Agreed. The other advantage of telling a backstory is I got to call back all those awesome actors that are dead in the current timeline. I am super excited, however to get back to the current timeline and find out what happens next. And a new clone! I always love when they introduce a new clone. So all in all, this episode gets 9 out of 10 glasses of iced tea. Why didn't it get a perfect 10? There was not enough footage of my regular clones or current day stuff. And no Helena at all, which of course makes sense because she's not part of the story yet. But I hope you do your Helena impression <laughs> either way, Karen. Because I love it, and I've missed it over these long months. So have a great week, and I'm so glad to have you both back. Oh, by the way, did you watch that After the Black show? I did, and I really think that it was a lot of fun, and it could bring some extra fun to this season. So I'm glad that they've decided to do it. Catch you next week, Clone Club. Thank you. Thanks. Just, thank you, Justina. Yes, I, yes, I watched the After the, the Black. Always, I do. Yes. Yes. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Justina. I'm going to have to see more Helena this season in order oh, to, yes. to hone oh, yes. my Helena impression. <laughs> but yes, uh, I'll do Helena a few times this season, I'm quite sure. Yeah, that's I, a given. I, yeah, people ask for it. 
It, it's not me, all right? <laughs> Trust me, people ask me to do it. I do not. Uh, I fall into it sometimes. Yes, so. <laughs> you do. Uh, so thanks, Justina. That's fabulous. I love it. And yeah, that's, again, it's the same reason I took off a little bit is because it didn't have Helena. Yes. My One of my favorite clones, Helena and Kasim, are kind of tied in my opinion. And they're both curlies. That's yep. why. So uh, there's that. But uh, yeah, I loved getting feedback on our first episode. That was fantastic. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, so she sends you feedback on the witness prophecies? Yes, she does. Yay. That's so good. I love it. Okay, so uh, looking forward to next week. You want to read the, the spoiler we have for next week? All right. After evading a Neolution attack in Iceland, Sarah returns home to track down an elusive new ally. She follows bread crumbs and uncovers the next faucet. Take two. After evading a Neolution attack in Iceland, Sarah returns home to track down an elusive new ally. She follows bread crumbs and uncovers the next faucet of Neolution's agenda, implanting dangerous technological devices in humans. However, those she left behind are wary about her return, not wanting to relinquish their semblance of normalcy. As Cosima struggles with Delphine's disappearance, Allison and Donnie host a pregnant and ever-hungry Helena. <laughs> Meanwhile, Felix, feeling like an outsider, embarks on his own journey of self-discovery. Mm, transgressive border crossing. Yes. <laughs> Sounds good. And yeah, implanting dangerous technological devices. Mm-hmm. Nailed it already. <laughs> well, if that's what the worms are. Yeah. If that's what they are. Yeah, if that's what they we'll are. We'll find out. And we also have to give out our feedback information, although it's still sketchy at this point. Right. Um, the most everything set up. <laughs> right. The most reliable thing. Um, well, we don't have a deadline for our feedback yet because we're not quite sure when we'll be doing this um, every week. Uh, but our website is facebook.com forward slash Felix Helixes. F-E-L-I-X-H-E-L-I-X-E-S. So Felix Helixes on Facebook. And uh, we don't have a Twitter yet. We don't have an email yet. So you can give us feedback that way. Or... There, you can find me on Twitter at Elevaria, A-L-E-V-E-R-I-A, and there is a link in my bio to my blog where everything else is. And Steve, you want to give your info? And you can tweet at me at Salyer Steve, S-A-L-Y-E-R-S-T-E-V-E. -E -E. Yay! But we will get that other information, and it will. our email and our Twitter handle will be on our Facebook page as well in the information section. So, And um, then when our Twitter goes up, everything else will be in there. Yes. <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, and we'll have the, hopefully we'll have that information by the ne our next broadcast time. Yes. Um, and if you happen to be following us on our old podcast, believe me, you will get a new request right <laughs> yes uh that is over and done we have no connection with that anymore none no absolutely none so uh you can unfollow that one <laughs> yes <laughs> and they've received the um notification that that one will no longer be continuing oh okay if they were Subscribe to us on iTunes. Okay. Over there. But we'll be here at Felix's Helixes and on iTunes and all those nice things. Um, yes. Southgate Media. Uh, so, hooray. Group. Yeah, Southgate Media Group. You can find us there uh, on Facebook as well. They were kind enough to host us. And uh, can't wait to take this journey with you guys this season. Yes, looking forward to it. It looks like it's going to be just a completely awesome season. Yay, and I'm so glad we get to do this again, Steve. Yes, we couldn't stop not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was scrambling. Let's get yes. together again. All right, so that's it for this week. Um, I don't have a, a happy sign-off or anything, <laughs> but uh, we do have a closing 
theme, and so I will play. It's nothing special. I, I don't know why I'm building this up. Is there a reason I should be building this up, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> Just say no. No. Just tell me to shut up. All right. So we'll see you next week. <laughs>